Question three was very poorly done. Now you know that already, okay? Um, but the disappointing thing is that it was poorly done because I think you looked at it and freaked out because you'd never seen a question quite phrased like this before, okay? Now, I'll admit, you know, it, it is a little more scary when you're like, whoa, look at all that. Where did that E in that pie and all that coming, sort of thing come from? So that's why a lot of you just looked at it and just abandoned it, okay? However, can I just suggest, I think it's these kinds of questions specifically that really tell you how much you understand. Here's what I mean, okay? When you get a question that um, is exactly how you've seen it before, like 1A, 1A, okay? That's more or less exactly what you've seen before, and you just go through steps, right? When you get a mark for that, or you don't get a mark for that, all that tells you is, okay, did I, did I, you know, get the algorithm right, and was I able to execute it? That's all. Didn't really actually show any understanding so much. If you know the steps, you don't necessarily need to know what partial fractions are or why they work or why they're useful in order to do 1A, right? When you get to question three, when it's phrased differently, in order to do this question well, and as you see when I go through this, I will continually ask this question, it's all about, do you understand what each of these things means? Do you know what it means that something is an increasing function? You're like, of course I do. Well, maybe you didn't if you struggled to transition from part B to part C, right? Do you understand how inequalities work? Well, of course I do. Well, maybe you didn't if you couldn't transition from C part one to C part two, right? Those kinds of things. So um, these questions are really valuable to you. Uh, I know this sounds really weird, but you ought to cherish them because they tell you exactly what you need to work on. Right? It tells you the concepts where you need to go back and not just be able to say, okay, I can do these questions, but do I get this? Can I explain this to someone else now? Because I know, I know what this means and I know what approach I would take even though I've never seen this kind of question before. Does that make sense? So question three is a real gem. So pay close attention when we're going through this. Maybe on your own, um, on your own working, you might want to follow me line by line for this one because we all did it so badly. Okay? Here's where I'll do something that I hope will model rightly the way that you ought to approach this exam. When I looked and I had a, I had a flick through the marks and I thought, mm, okay, how do I feel about this as a teacher, right? As your teacher, the person who prepared you, allegedly, for this exam, okay? And I won't, I won't lie, in some places I was quite disappointed, okay? But um, if you're anything like me, I think most of us, we like to think, ah, oh, this isn't my fault, I wasn't prepared for this, someone else, someone else is to blame for my lousy mark, or you know, it's because I had too many assessments on, or it's because whatever, right? You think of a reason, and you say, that's the reason why I didn't do well in this exam. Now, I can do the same. I can say, ah, oh, those lousy students, they never pay attention to me, blah, 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 right? I think that's the wrong thing to do, most of the time. And I, I questioned myself. I thought, when I looked particularly at um, part A of this question, which arguably was the easiest part of this question. Most of you got the four marks, all of them. Um, but you got it by the skin of your teeth. It was dreadfully set out. And I thought to myself, okay, maybe I have not modeled for this for you well, okay? I want you to all have a look at Hui Shan's paper right now. Would you hold it up? Just sort of hold it around so people can sort of see it on different sides of the room, okay? Now, you have a look at Hui Shan's page and compare it to yours, okay? Um, if your working was all over the place, uh, it took me probably twice as long to mark it and go through it than it should have. Maybe you don't mind that it took me twice as long, and you shouldn't have to, but it's in your interest as a person who's trying to communicate things mathematically to put them out clearly from start to finish. Not from start to, oh, some things over here, and then, oh, I need to do a few more things over here, and then sort of swap sides and it's a bit of a nightmare, okay? <laughs> so, um, later on, if you didn't get a close look at it, um, do take a look at Hushan's solution because it's an exemplar, right? But I'll try and work through it on the board now. Here's what we had to prove. Uh, this. Now, this is what you had to do, and you were, um, you were confined into a method because they said, use the T method, okay? Fine. So therefore, you've got to start off by saying, let, and then you have to do all of these things, okay? <laughs> Now this is where some of your problems began because you either did this somewhere completely different, right? Which might have been okay, but in at least five or six cases, you got this next line, like just the substitution, you got that wrong, right? 
the problem was you knew where you were meant to end up. So you started from a wrong sort of setup and somehow you made your way to the right thing. Um, and if I've written fudge on your, um, on your solution, what that means is it's kind of like, ah, uh, you know, I'll just, I'll just make this negative a plus because I know it needs to be or something like that, okay? So you have to start off like this. I'm going to do this exhaustively, okay? Um, you, you, you must start off like this. By far, the most problems crept in. By far, if you got this part wrong, most of the problems crept in here. Which is not surprising, because you've been using t-results for a while in these terms, but this is a bit new, because we've only as extension two students have you been using it for integration, okay? So a small number of you got this wrong and then it just fell apart from there, okay? The first mark was not for doing that. The first mark for is actually putting all of that into here correctly, okay? So I'd say this. There were huge amounts of simplification you could do, okay? But because this was a proof, and there were four whole marks on it, right? Uh, you could not skip steps. You could not skip steps. And there were some crucial steps that got skipped, all right? What I would do here is I would multiply um, across, right? And you would get this. This was about, oops, sorry, even that's wrong, because I didn't do these. Oh, that was another place that um, errors crept in. Forgot to do your, um, because it's just a normal substitution, you forgot your boundaries, right? And then suddenly pi has disappeared. Those kinds of things are what I mean by fudges, okay? Um, this was, this was the furthest that I accepted you simplifying. If you skipped any more than that, right, and said, ta-da, magic, at the end, I had the result I needed, um, you didn't demonstrate that you knew how to simplify T results from an integral, okay? So that comes down to here. Now, the reason why I actually wrote this line out for you is because so many of you went wrong from here to the next line. Oh dear, what happened? You should have written this. And then your twos would cancel, right? But so many of you, you missed a T squared or you missed a T, like you just didn't collect like terms properly. Collecting like terms, what was that? Year, year, year eight, I think, is when you start doing indices and in like terms, right? Um, and so I guess this is, this is a lesson for you in terms of coming back to check things. And you can't go back to check things if the working is not there, okay? So you get to there and then you realize, okay, I need to, split this thing up, right? So then you pull up your partial fractions, okay? Now I think the partial fractions were generally done pretty well, and part of that is because it's a simple partial fraction to divide, so that was lucky for you. So I think you get, what is it, one on, yeah, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now at this point, you get your logs. I might use this as a um, point to mention. I know lots of people do it, but I am really not a fan of this. Sorry. Not a fan, okay? And I saw it all over the place. Again, I mean, it was an integration paper, right? So no surprise, okay? I'll tell you why I dislike it. Um, it's interesting because the, the most common people who do it are people who know extension too. They're the people who like, psh, you know, these extra square bits on the brackets. Who's got time to write those? I just want to go here, right? I don't want to bother myself with trivial things like that. I know what this means. Except the irony is, the place where this screws people up the most is integration by parts, which only extension two students know. I'll tell you why. Because it's in integration by parts, that's the most common place where you get definite integrals mixing with other stuff, right? You know, you got your other, you know, minus blah, 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 over here, right? Now you have a look at this. How much of this does this definite integral, you know, substitute values in, how much does it apply to? And the answer is, well, it should be all of it, right? Now, if you did that, you're not saving any time on this. Actually, oh, people who want to save time, you're writing a whole extra long line, whoa, 0.2 of a second. But most of you did not. You wrote this, right? Which is wrong. It's wrong. That's equal to, I mean, if, we're, if I continue the scheme, right? That's equal to this. Whoops. 
which is not, okay? People want to save time. What are you saving, really? And what are you losing? I think you're losing a lot more than you're saving, okay? So that's just a, I mean, I know people are going to cling to it to the bitter end, um, but just don't say I didn't warn you, okay? Now, you get to this point. You need to do some simplification of the logs, right? You cannot go from here to this result. You can't do it. And lots of you were, maybe you were running out of time, or you're like, I can't be bothered to do that. And you said, ta-da, I'm from there. You wrote down your result, and you couldn't do it, okay? So I was expecting you to do at least something like this. <sighs> okay, let's do our first line. There's your first one. There you go. Okay, so you've got to reckon with the fact that you've got things that are zero, right? And then you've got these, um, these negatives which are going to become powers, right? After you work with those, that's how you could get down to your final result. Okay, so let me tell you where the four marks were because I didn't mention it before. Number one for this line for actually taking all your T results and substituting the whole thing, okay? Some of you got confused because you did it in bits and pieces. You did some of your thetas and some of your Ts over like two or three lines, bad idea. One mark here. Second mark for getting to this point, for taking the integrand and actually taking the effort to simplify it properly, okay? Third mark for actually integrating. And then the fourth mark was here in the logs, okay? Hmm. Now, by the way, just as a point of interest, the reason why you don't really need to worry about absolute values here is because you know what the um, you know what these values are. So you don't need to say, oh, absolute value of that, because it is positive, right? In a similar way to x squared plus 1 being positive before. So in case you're wondering why I haven't put any of those in, 